Okay. You want to start the recording or? All right. No. All right. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Megan Fall. I'm the vice president of the Arkansas Audubon Society, and I'd like to welcome everyone to the fall 2021 meeting of the Arkansas Audubon Society. Uh, the Audubon Society was founded in 1955 to conserve the natural resources of Arkansas with a focus on birds. Specifically, the society promotes research through our trust, conservation through our bird records and bird friendly yard initiative, and finally education through our youth ecology camps. I'd like to begin the evening by saying I hope all of you had a wonderful week and a great day birding on your own. And after our speaker presentation, we'll uh, announce any winners we have of the birding competition. And uh, we'll also go over the society trust report and any other business we may have. First though, we do have an excellent evening presentation plan for you. Uh, Wildman Wilson, Steve Wildman Wilson is gonna speak to us tonight. He was born in Little Rock, Arkansas in 1950. He holds a bachelor's degree in speech, business, and education from Southern Nazarene University in Bethany, Oklahoma, and an MBA from the University of Central Oklahoma. Upon graduation, he immediately returned to the natural state where he pursued a career with the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission. And during his 37 years with the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission, he won numerous awards and earned his nickname of Wildman. Soon after retirement, he was inducted into the Arkansas Tourism Hall of Fame and uh, the Arkansas Game and Fish Foundation's Outdoor Hall of Fame. He produces and hosts a statewide radio program called Call of the Wild and enjoys spending time in the outdoors with his family and especially his grandson, Luke. Steve, it's very nice to have you with us tonight. You can take it away now. Yeah, thank y'all so much. This is my first experience as Zooming. So now I can say I'm, uh, I'm, I'm up on it. I, I, I've Zoomed before now. So thank y'all so much for the invitation. And what well, sounds like y'all have had a great time in the outdoors already uh, going around different parts of the state this last month, I guess. You had some great weather for it as well. And uh, so thank y'all so much. Uh, I'm just going to talk a little bit. And if it's okay with y'all, I'll open up for questions. Would that work at the end? Everybody, if, if you're not asleep by then, and I know it gets dark so early, it feels like it ought to be 10 o'clock outside. <clears throat> and we'll try to keep you posted on the Razorback game. I know my wife's watching in there. So if you hear somebody yelling, uh, that means we scored a touchdown or something in there. So this is a real special day for me, a pretty emotional day for me, to be honest with you. Um, this was the opening day of modern gun deer season here in Arkansas. And I know some of y'all probably don't deer hunt. You probably run into a few deer hunters out there in the woods. But uh, I grew up obviously here in Southwest Little Rock and, and uh, deer hunted all my life. In fact, my dad and I spent 34 opening days of gun deer season together. Uh, in a row before he died about 10 years ago. So it's very special. And uh, I continued obviously to hunt with uh, my friends at my deer camp and uh, until a couple years ago. And I I guess I'm just getting older. Uh, my my will to kill has pretty much gone away. I turned into fishing more. Yeah, I see some heads shaking there. But today was the first day, first year in 47 years that I hadn't spent opening day in a deer stand. So, uh, and I'm okay with it. it. It's fun, just how, you know, how life goes. It changes sometimes, but what a beautiful day. And I'm so happy for all the hunters out there that, that got a deer today or just have the experience. And it wasn't the kill, it was more, I tell people it really isn't, it isn't the steak that attracted me to the hunting. It was a sizzle, everything that goes around it. Uh, getting ready for deer camp and, and building the fires, riding four wheelers, just the camaraderie. So anyway, um, I've thought it all through today and uh, I'm so proud to have had that experience. But like I said, I grew up in Southwest Little Rock and I was very fortunate, fortunate to have a mom and dad in the house. Uh, nowadays kids can't say that sometimes, but 
I know how much of a blessing that is just to have a mom and dad, both they love the Lord and they love the outdoors. And so I, I really had no idea how blessed I was till I got older, but I grew up in a little church called the Nazarene church and uh, mom and dad. Well, I t I'll tell people I had a drug problem growing up. I was drugged to church every Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, if you know what I'm talking about back in the day. And, uh, and then when I got time to go to college, uh, they wanted me to go to a, a Christian college, a Nazarene college. Uh, the closest one was in uh, Bethany, Oklahoma. That's why she was talking about, I got a degree in speech, business, and education from Bethany, Oklahoma. It's right next to Oklahoma City. And I stayed a couple more years and got a master's from Central State University. They changed all the names of these colleges now. And, uh, but let me tell you what, uh, good people in Oklahoma, okay, good people, but I could not wait to get back to the natural state. I, if I was a bird, I would not live in Oklahoma, I tell you that, because the wind blows 90 miles an hour every day. So it was really tough. Uh, you couldn't fish, you couldn't hunt, you couldn't play golf. That's why I studied every day so hard, you know that. But I was so glad to get back to Arkansas. And uh, not too long after I came back, I joined up with the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission and uh, spent 37 and a half years there. A lot of fun. I started out in the Hunter Education Division where I actually traveled the state and I certified volunteer hunter education instructors where, and it wasn't even mandatory then, of course, it's mandatory now if you're a certain age group to have this course, just like driving a car before you can go drive a car. You have to have this course before you can go hunting. Did that for a number of years. <clears throat> and probably one of the most fun jobs that I had was, uh, was Project Wild. I don't know if y'all have heard of that before, but W-I-L-D stands for Wildlife in Learning Design. And really it's a conservation education program designed for school teachers. So I got to go around the state and actually train school teachers how to teach their kids about wildlife. And it amazed me, it really opened my eyes to how much people do not know about nature as I'm sure you're aware of as well. Uh, the way, best way I like to explain Project Wild was when I was growing up, when some of you were growing up, when we, when we actually learned multiplication, addition, subtraction, we used apples and oranges. You know, if you had five apples and had and subtracted two, how many would you have? Well, this is sort of the same way, except we use deer and rabbits uh, because they multiply a lot faster than apples and oranges. But it's just kind of using wildlife as a way of teaching things like math and science and history and language. And, and it's really, really a lot of fun. So if you get a chance, enroll in a Project Wild workshop. Now, I always like to stop right here and tell people how I got my name. They always want to know how you got the name Wild Man. And regardless of what you think, it has nothing to do with the way I act, okay? In fact, I kind of act crazy so I can live up to my name, but someday I'm going to make up a better story than this one. But this is the truth. Uh, for a short period of time at the Game and Fish Commission, we had four Steve Wilsons. All at one time, same name. The director of the Game and Fish Commission was named Steve Wilson. In fact, his middle initial was N, Steve N. Wilson. My name is Stephen Wilson. So you can imagine we were one floor apart. Our phone numbers were like one digit apart. So you can imagine how many people would call up there and ask for Steve Wilson. Well, the, uh, the assistants up there, they answered the phone. They'd say, well, which one you want? We got four. So they would say, well, I want that wild one. Project Wild. And that's really how I got my name. And so they could tell us apart. And Steve N. Wilson, great guy. Uh, he was a director for 20 something years. In fact, he just passed away about six months ago, I believe it was. And uh, super guy, but had a great time doing Project Wild for a few years. And then I went ahead from there and headed up the entire program there called uh, Information Education, which was over all your maps and your educational programs, your publications, the TV, the radio, uh, magazines, so forth. And I didn't do a very good job of that. I did that for about 10 years. 
and I just don't like to stay in the office. So I got promoted to another position. In fact, they'd never had it before. It was called public affairs coordinator and that fit me perfectly. And that allowed me to get out of the office. I'm not good at managing people. And I got to go out and speak all across the state to anywhere from church groups to Audubon's to hunting groups uh, to chamber of commerce banquets. And what a joy that was. Uh, I spent about 10 years doing that as well. Worked the legislature a, a couple, three sessions. That was, I won't say that was fun. It was very interesting. And, um, but just had a ball doing that. And then ended up mainly doing a television show. Uh, some of you might remember it. Some of you have probably been on it before called Talking Outdoors. Uh, it used to be called Talking Outdoors at the Corner Cafe because I used to deer hunt down in a little place called Hampton, Arkansas. And there was actually a corner cafe, a cafe on the corner there. And a bunch of us guys would go out and hunt and fish for a little bit. And then we'd come in there and drink coffee and eat breakfast and tell lies about hunting and fishing. That's how I got the name for the show. So, and then eventually we just shortened it to Talking Outdoors. And uh, now uh, Trey Reed took that over, by the way. You probably see a little bit. It's called, I believe it's called Arkansas Wildlife is the name of it. Uh, they're still a good, good show. I still continue to do my radio show, which I've done for about 25 years now. Uh, I know Simon's then been on there a lot. We talked about trying to have Audemars on there at least once a year, talking about bird watching and so forth. But it's called Call of the Wild. And uh, it's on KARN 102.9. We, uh, it airs at 6 o'clock on Saturday mornings and 4 o'clock on Sunday afternoons. It's a repeat on 4 o'clock Sunday afternoons. Now, I don't get up at six. I'm up at six. I was up this morning, but we really record it on Wednesdays. So we just try to guess what the weather's going to be like. It's a lot of fun sometimes. We just sound sleepy when we're on there, but been doing that, like I said, for about 25 years. And now that I'm retired, retired back in 2016, I didn't, didn't do it very well. I didn't handle retirement very well. I, uh, I, I, I'm still doing my radio show. I still do public speaking around, just went to Hot Springs Village yesterday morning, spoke to a prayer breakfast, and I go all over the state, and I love that. And I, uh, I do some commercials now for Smart Auto Group down in Southeast Arkansas, down around Pine Bluff, really, and Malvern and Whitehall. And then also represent Bradford Marine and ATV, and I work at Bass Pro, one of the most fun things I do. I work there about 12 hours a week. Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. So I work three days a week and fish three days a week. That's pretty good retirement right there. And uh, so I, that's kind of where I've been now and, and uh, having a good time, enjoying it, enjoying this beautiful weather. And I'll talk to you a little bit about some things that maybe you want to know. If y'all got questions, you guys can jump in here. And I don't know, how, how do you raise a hand on Zoom? Or you just butt in? Uh, there's a little spot down near the bottom that says more, and you can just raise a hand that way, or you can just speak either one. You can also write in the chat box. So I got an M on the in the middle of my. Oh, there you are. That's you. <laughs> That's me. Sorry. Yeah, I, I, I caught that up. And Megan, uh, it doesn't matter. You guys jump in here if you have a question or whatever. I've, I've turned into, I'll, I'll talk all night now. I've turned into a bird watcher more since I retired. Uh, I have a back deck here, back porch glassed in. And we really, we really have enjoyed feeding the birds and watching them a little bit. And I have a question for you. Where'd my birds go? I hadn't seen them in a while. They're just starting to come back a little bit. And I'll go, I know the squirrels, they're here. But uh, are the birds taking a break right now? Yeah, there's plenty of natural food for them, so they don't really need our feeders too much. Of course, they're not singing anymore for the most part, and a lot of other birds have already headed south of the winter. So it's just a quiet time of year until it gets really cold. Good. I'll bring them back. We had a lot of beautiful birds during that snow last year, and so I still have my feeders out. I got about seven feeders, and now the big challenge is keeping the squirrels out of the feeders, and so... Uh, I'll have to share that with you sometime, my success on that. And it's not a pellet gun. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a question for you, Steve. Yeah. Was there ever a, a topic you covered on your one of your shows 
that you thought was not going to be all that interesting, but then, wow, you really learned a lot. <laughs> it's fascinating. You know, we, not really. I, I think we have in Arkansas so many special interest groups and it just amazes me. I've learned so much from doing the show because obviously we, we can't do it all. I want to sometimes, but you know, I have somebody on from the canoe club and there's just so much to learn from that. And then I have a guy on from a herpetology society, you know, the herps and, you learn, I mean, just nature is so intriguing to me. And these, these guys, the hard thing I have is usually people that are my guests, like yourself, know so much about their stuff. It's hard to where you can explain it in layman's terms. You know, they're, they use terms this big. And that was my job at the Game and Fish. You think about it. I actually translated all those things that the biologists studied and put it in layman's terms or redneck terms, I call it. <laughs> where I can understand it. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, I'm always shocked trapping and so forth. Just there's so many special interest groups we have here in Arkansas. And that it, it's been fun for me to do that. Any other question? I, I thought of a few things too. If you just butt in, if you have a question, I was thinking about where y'all been this last few weeks. I see you some of your field trips and so forth. And uh, man, you've been all over the state and that's awesome. You probably know more places to go look at birds and so forth. But I was thinking maybe some different ways to go bird watching. Usually when you go bird watching, everybody just walks around, watches birds, goes on a hike, if you will. But just through my own experience, not necessarily on purpose, uh, I found a lot of other ways that I see a lot of different birds and one's out fishing. I mean, just a flat bottom boat, brim fishing see so many birds, you know, because I, I fish around close to the bank and get to watch water, a lot of wildlife doing that as well. So just take a fishing trip. And then another thing I like uh, to do is smallmouth bass fishing in some creeks, especially up in the Ozarks. And when you're floating those creeks, you stop, pull over canoes and so forth. You see a lot of different shore birds that you don't see different parts of the state as well. Uh, fly fish, it's coming up pretty soon the brown trout are starting to spawn. So these next couple of weeks is a perfect time to go up there on the Little Red River or the White River, preferably the Little Red, and you wade out there. Of course, it's quiet. And man, when you got ducks and geese and all sorts of birds flying up and down the river that normally you don't see, or I don't see down here at my cabin. So uh, the water trails that the Game of Fish have developed over there, I don't know if you've done that, by all the view, They've got quite a few of them. I think they call them water trails now. It's like a float trip. You've probably done some of those in kayaks and you really get way back off the roads that way and quiet and peaceful. So uh, I think that's where they saw that ivory bill woodpecker, wasn't it? Has he shown up again lately? No, but oh. the, the questions constantly show up. You probably yeah. get those questions when you give talks. How do you answer it? <laughs> <laughs> Um, when people ask me what, what happened with the ivory bill, my response is, well, it's possible that the bird that Gene Sparling saw was the last one. And shortly after that, that bird died once the search really got underway. And that's why they couldn't get any more evidence of it. Who, who, knows? who knows? Yeah, that's, those are big woods over there. But uh, yeah, but, but that's a lot of fun there too. And I think some other ways that just basics, I try to tell people if they're gonna start bird watching is uh, our nature centers, Game and Fish Nature Center. Just about every one of those have bird feeders at bird stations and you can sit in the, in the warmth of the, of the nature center and they, have, they do a good job of feeding the birds right outside those, uh, those nature centers as well. And of course, uh, two things I think about if you want to organize hunt, I'll try to, in fact, I can, I'll take a tour. We might want to talk about this. This would be a fun time we could do. I never thought about it, but I work also for Little Rock Tours. Are you familiar with them? They have those big tour buses, uh, Carrie Martin and Gina, and I've done a couple tours for them, uh, nature tours, if you will. Uh, in the fall, lots of times, I will get a bus load, if you will, and take them up and see the elk. Uh, the elk are up there at Ponca, Arkansas, another beautiful place to go this time of year. The leaves are beautiful right now. They're changing. The elk are bugling right there. you got the Buffalo River right there. 
you got, uh, what's that, Whitaker Point. I went there. That was on my bucket list, that hike out there to that big overcrop of uh, Hawksbill Crag. See a lot of birds on that. Just a beautiful part of the world to be in. But I do some tours for Little Rock Tours. And we People pay money, of course. We haul them up there, feed them, and let them look at tours and give them a seminar on the way. Another thing I do along the bird in, in field of it is we also take a tour to Casco, to our um, potlatch conservation program education uh, center down there. I don't know if all of you have been there or not, but the hummingbirds, and what a great treat that is. And a lot of research there, Hannah Beasley actually traps and catches and bans hummingbirds. Is she still the only person in Arkansas that's certified to do that? I believe she is. Isn't she? Yes, she is, unfortunately. I mean, great, fortunately we have her, but I wish yeah. we had more banders. That, true. And I, I'm not sure, I hadn't heard from her lately. I don't know if she's in good health or not. I've got to check on her, but uh, but what a great trip down there. And of course that's free of charge. People, public can sign up and she has everybody down there for a day. So I take a tour bus down there. And then what we do, we have about 40 on the bus and we split them up. We have 20 go down with her and actually catch hummingbirds. She gives them a good lesson on hummingbirds habitats and so forth then she go catches them and they get to watch her band them and then she lets them put them in their hand and and turn turn the hummingbird loose quite an experience we have the other 20 up here at our at our training center at the same time <clears throat> and i have a bedford camera and video they come up and do a little seminar on photography and taking pictures of birds and wildlife and so forth. So then in the afternoon, we switch around. So that's another good free way to, to get some good photographs and watch birds learn all about hummingbirds in that part of the country. Of course, that's not too far from Stuttgart. And um, there's a lot of different birds down there right now, hopefully coming in next week, duck season starts next, uh, next Saturday as well. So hopefully get more ducks in here. And Smith's long spur season starts as well at Stuttgart Airport soon. What does? What does? Smith's long spur, the little sparrow that everyone goes to the airport to see. <laughs> really? That's cool. Yeah. Why does it just come down there? Eat the mosquitoes? <laughs> <laughs> no, because it's the habitat specialist on the three on grass that grows along the runways. Wow. That's where it winters. And it's just about the only place in the state to see it. There will probably be more of those than there will ducks next Saturday. In the <laughs> opening that day would be, that would be good because we're we're taking some friends from georgia down here to, okay. to see if they can find the smiths so that'd be fun yeah the, the airport's still in operation okay yeah. well you'll have a lot of traffic probably uh people really flying into duck hunt there i mean it's amazing yeah, and, and and it's 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 crazy because the duck hunters want to know what are you doing, and you say, <laughs> well, I'm looking for birds, and they said, so are we, and then you show them a picture of like a vermilion flycatcher, and they're like, oh my god, come over and look, this guy's got pictures of a bird. That's like, <laughs> so, that's cool. Yeah, it's cool. That is good, and of course, don't forget, uh, in January is Eagle Awareness Month, and I've had a lot of fun with that. Uh, a lot of people don't wear, know where to go see eagles. We've got quite a few of them in here, Arkansas. I see a lot of them when I'm up fishing on the Little Red and so forth. But uh, the Gray Lake, I don't think they did it last year because of the COVID, but they do those tours. Have you ever been on any of those? They'll uh, do bar party barge tours on the lake where people can get pretty much up close to eagles, and that's been a real fun time too. Yes, we did that with Arkansas Audubon once, I think. Oh, did you? I think we did it with the Audubon group one year. Okay. I got to do yeah. that. They do a good job down there. They have a whole weekend called Eagle, et cetera, I believe it is. Yeah, Bald Knob is also a great place. We saw maybe six, seven eagles yesterday over Bald oh, Knob. Oh, really? Yeah. And I'm, I'm up here in the woods in our cabin right on the Little Red. Oh, and, I wish I was the, there with you. And the eagle flew over the other day just to rub it in that he had a bigger trout than I did. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Making the hate. They got to live, too. Hey, yeah, we uh, we got I took pictures of one with a duck uh, day before yesterday. So, oh, really? Yeah, it's fun to watch. Yeah, it, it you know nature just that way. One of my most fun experiences on the Little Red was we was up there in I think it's January February, and I caught a trout. We were doing one of those trips where you actually catch trout and they go over to the bank and clean them and cook them right there, a, a, a shoreline lunch. But I caught a trout. There was snow on the ground. 
and I put it in the live well and kind of slammed the door. And when I did, eight turkeys gobbled up there on the hill. And I like to went crazy, but just a beautiful sound up there along that river. You live in God's country. Um, anywhere in Arkansas is God's country. That's pretty much <laughs> true. We're so blessed. You know, I went to school in Oklahoma, like I said, and I could not wait to get back. I mean, I'm sorry. That wind every day, another trees have leaves on them. I don't see how a bird lives there. I really, or I don't see how it keeps its feathers. <laughs> so, Wild Man, I have to ask, do you have a favorite bird? And if so, what is it? Well, I, I always thought if I came back in another life, what bird was I come back as? <laughs> and I think I'd be a hummingbird. Oh. Yeah, I mean, I just, I, I just kind of move fast. I don't slow down. I'd probably die young, but still, I, I love hummingbirds. <laughs> uh, the most, the rarest bird, my wife and I got bird ID books here. And of course we see the cardinals and all that stuff, but we saw, and it took me a while. I had to look it up and it's, it's probably not real rare, but we saw a Baltimore Oriole. Mm. They, they just, and they came and left. They don't stay long here. Is that true? They breed in the state. Well, I don't know. Last, last winter, they were here for about two or three days, and we never saw another one. But what a beautiful bird. Look, look along the uh, uh, Arkansas River on okay. the banks. Yeah, then the trees on the banks, they have little nests that kind of hang oh, down really? like the back. And, and like around Toad Suck or uh, there in Little Rock at several of the parks there, they're just full of them in the spring. wonder what made them come through here just for two days. I mean, they don't migrate. They stay here. Yeah, they, they, they do. They, they leave. Oh, they do. They, they are here during the, 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 the spring, and, okay. and they, they are breeding along the river. Are they real common? Do you all see them at your house a lot? Or No, they're not, not a backyard feeder bird. Unless okay. you have a, oh. an Oriole feeder, a sugar water feeder that has big openings and big perches for them. Or, or just put out grape jelly. That's what I do. I'm, oh. I'm in northeast Louisiana and they nest in my yard and I'm not by a river, but not far from the Mississippi River. Yeah. yeah I, I put out grape jelly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I just saw them a couple of times and then they were gone. They're so beautiful. Uh, I saw one at a glance and it left and I, I wasn't for sure what I saw. And then we happened to see one more, which I was glad. But that's about the rarest thing. I know everything else is pretty much, I probably see some if I don't know what I'm seeing, chickadees and I never see one of those though. Can that bird say something? Not on demand, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Inky doo. <-doo. laughs> um, yeah, if, if, if any of you guys, if you get a chance, uh, have y'all been up there to see the elk? No, have I haven't. Made, if, if you, made that, you have been up there yeah a lot of you have i mean just a great try to make that trip from louisiana it'd be worth it oh i'd especially, love to yeah. especially this time of year there's so many things it, going. No, where is it where are they it's a little town called ponca p-o-n-c-a it's 30 miles south of harrison 15 okay. miles west of jasper there's a okay. little valley there called boxley valley okay and i've been up that area in the summer you don't even years have to ago. get out of your years car ago. You don't even have to get out of your car to see the elk. Uh, in fact, be careful. Don't run over ones because usually they win if you hit an elk. They're, <laughs> like these they're big. <laughs> yeah, they're seven or eight, 900 pounds animals. I've seen them in Colorado. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's the same difference. Yeah, these elk get huge up there. And of course, we have an elk. So we may be the only state that has both an elk and an alligator hunting season. I'm trying to figure out if there's any more states that have that. Now, do you guys ever go to our hatcheries? I, I saw where y'all made a trip to Centerton or something, but, you know, we've got four warm water. I say we, I don't work for game fish anymore, but I guess I really do in my heart. But we got four warm water hatcheries, and then we got a cold water hatchery up at Hardy. And those are great places to go see birds during the year as well, protected um, year round. And I think even some of them, don't they have blinds set up where I think birders can go out and just uh, watch the birds and photograph on the on the edges of their ponds? 
They got one at Lone Oak and they got one at Lake Hamilton and they got one in Centerton and they have one in, uh, where's the other one? North, uh, Northeast. Norfolk. Well, that, that's our, that's our trout hatchery. That's Coldwater. Yeah. And, and one yeah, Northwest, three. that's, that's Centerton. Is that where y'all went? I thought I saw on your agenda where you went to a fish hatchery. Yeah, we we didn't end up going to Charlie Craig over there, but yeah, that was okay. one we were planning to go to. And there's also one in Northeast Arkansas. Uh, I'll, I'll think of it after a while. Yeah, well, I can't think of the other one either, but I've been to those those three, and, uh -huh. and the one down toward Hot Springs does have some uh, elevated areas to to view off of. Uh, that's not okay. really a blind; it doesn't have a covered area. But it's a great place to go see all kinds of things. I mean, different times of year, a lot of shorebirds show up there. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, one at Centerton does uh, has several raised areas as well to to view wildlife from, and and work quite well. I plan on being up there next week as well. Oh, that'll so, be good. Yeah, we're looking looking for those guys from Georgia. I think we're looking for some uh, geese. <laughs> So, oh, geese. Yeah. What now? What kind? A speck of belly, or do you look for snows? Or we look, we look for anything. In this instance, okay. we're looking for one that uh, is kind of a non. Uh, it's it was an introduced, but it's now been declared as native to that area up there. Oh. Um, but the speckle bellies are coming in uh, into Bald Knob. We've seen like fifteen hundred or so at a time. And wow. Maybe Several thousand uh, of the uh, mallards are coming in. We're seeing a handful of Ross's goose come in, and a Good. handful of uh, of the uh, snow geese coming in, including you know some of the dark phase ones. So we're seeing uh, a lot of geese coming every day. You'll see geese flying over the house. It's time. It's time yeah. for my. That's what I remember a lot about deer season was sitting out there on a deer stand like today and watching deer and hearing the geese. You know, you can tell. It's just something about it that makes makes my blood curdle in there and just great memories there. But speckabellies are good. You know, those things are picking up a lot. They've increased the limit on them. And some of the best times I've had, I'm not a big duck hunter or really a goose hunter, but I love going out laying in the fields and decoying them in. I mean, they're gonna light right on top of you sometimes. It's cool. I've given up hunting completely other than with my camera, but well. I'm about, I don't, are we just lazy? I don't want to clean stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that might, that might be what it is. I really, I really can't explain it. You know, I work at Bass Pro and I talk to a lot of guys our age that come in and they'll say, well, you, you're going hunting. I said, no, nah, just what, lost my will to kill. And they said, me too. I said, I'm fishing more. And I said, yeah, cause I can throw them back. <laughs> I don't have exactly. to clean them. Uh, but I still just, you know, I'm, like I said, right here on my deck here, I've got bird feeders and of course got a deer feeder and I sit here, have more fun watching the deer eat. And uh, I saw a fox come out there and catch a squirrel the other day. And we've seen hogs out here and, and, uh, you never know what you're going to see. That's what I like about Arkansas. Yeah. We had a 10 point come through the yard today. That's a good uh, place to be today. I sent it to my son and grandson and said, hey, y'all seeing anything off your deer stands? <laughs> As they were out there freezing to death this morning. Yeah, hey, they're, up, you got, huh? they're in ne next to Branson up there. So they they were in a little chillier weather than we were too. So. It was pretty chilly down here in the 30s. Do you guys ever go to any of our wildlife management areas? Obviously not during hunting season, but I know you know there's a lot of food plots and good roads and things like that and Biomeda. Uh, so forth like that to on, on your bird watches yeah i do in louisiana too yeah you do okay good y'all have parishes down there don't you yes we do <laughs> yeah you you're from louisiana and uh, that's la right you know what yes. la stands for uh <laughs> lower lower arkansas By the way, we're playing LSU tonight. I hope you know that. Don't you on football. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, I'm looking to see if yeah, I got invited to boot. watch the game, and I thought I had to watch the uh, the meeting instead. <laughs> oh no, that's punishment. So here we go, Tigers. Here we go. I, I, I'm not a big LSU yeah. fan. So. In three Arkansas right now. Let's quit and go home. <laughs> yeah, I'm for it. <laughs>
No, that's great. I always love talking about hunting and fishing, the outdoors. We've just got so much stuff here in Arkansas, so many places to go and you can do it year round. That's what I like about it, really. You know, it gets cold, but and you can fish year round here and it doesn't get extremely cold where you can't at least get outside for a while. Now, last year was a little bit different with all the snow. We had enough of that for a week. Between that and COVID, I was, I was cooped up in here for a month. I didn't have it, my wife had it, but I watched a lot of birds. But we really, you know, we really at Bass Pro, we saw the silver lining really in the, in the COVID because you think about it. I mean, people weren't working. Uh, they couldn't go to parties and stuff like that. And they actually got outdoors. Uh, we were tickled to death. I think I think I talked to Game and Fish, and they said our our fishing related our fishing license sales actually increased. I think it was forty percent last year during the COVID. And people would come in Bass Pro. I'd see them go back there and buy fishing poles and stuff. And I'd say, Hey, where y'all going? They said, We have no idea. I said, What are you fishing for? We have no idea. We're just going. They bought tents, kayaks, and uh, so hopefully we got some more outdoor enthusiasts during this COVID. That'd be a silver lining for it anyway. Yeah, we have a lot more bird watchers now due to COVID. <laughs> a lot more yep. beginning bird watchers, uh, especially on Facebook is where a lot of them interact with us more experienced birders. That's yeah, a good down, point. yeah, down here in the LOS, I'm an officer in that, and our numbers have just skyrocketed for new of new members. Good, good. I would imagine today on the deer woods, there were a lot more birds being seen than deer. <laughs> That's what I did on, on deer stands. I mean, I'd sit out there, you're not watching deer, you might as well watch birds, and they'd fly in the, in, you know, you're in their habitat there, and they'll fly in the stand with you and just to watch them come alive. And it's amazing, it's amazing how one of those little flickers on the ground can sound like a 200-pound deer walking. <laughs> they're just over there throwing leaves and my heart start beating and it's one of them dead gum birds <laughs> i've uh talked to a few hunters that are like why do you bird watch i don't understand why you want to do that and i said well you like hunting right and it, yeah and i said it's the same thing except i'm not limited to when i can do it and i'm not limited to any species and they're like Oh, you know, I said I could go anytime. And by the way, there's even competitive bird watching. Yeah. And so then they're like, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I could see that. Don't yeah. tell Patty it's competitive bird watching. <laughs> uh, uh, you can get, if you choose to, you can get ranked. You can get ranked. Yes. Yeah. What I, uh, another good thing about bird watching too, in fact, you can go on a lot of lands that other people won't let you on the land to hunt. And, mm -hmm. and that's why I, I may even want to start hunting with a camera because people will let, give you access to some of the best hunting places where they don't want anybody else in there if you're going to kill stuff. So you get to go back and so forth and then take pictures of it. And then you got proof. That feeds the ego. You know, the only reason a lot of guys, we kill deer and stuff, it's our ego. We want to, and it feels good. I, I mean, we've all got egos. Just like if you get a picture of a rare bird, hey, you want to show that thing off. You've done something maybe nobody else can do. But you get a picture of it, I show them a picture of this deer or turkey. I say, hey, I could have killed it right there. It is 20 steps. So, and now he's still living to go back and take more pictures of. So there's a lot of advantages of photography and watching birds. Steve, I, was I, used, I used to be. Go ahead, No, I was just saying. Uh, I used to be a teacher, and occasionally some of my students would find out, you know, oh, you get you can get ranked, you know, what's your ranking, blah blah blah. And I'm like, I I would tell them. I haven't sent it in in a few years, but anyway, uh, and they're like, well, you know, you just have to see how many more to move up in the ranking. Like for me to move up in the ranking, somebody's got to die. <laughs> a lot of them and I, now you have a bird list i guess do you do the arkansas yeah. arkansas bird list and then the uh -huh. birders yeah a I have lot a of people list. do that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah that's that's cool that it's been a real success and, and you know i'm really happy for the game and fish commission really doing a lot more in that and they can do a lot more 
But when I worked there, of course, we were only supported through the sales of hunting and fishing license. And every time we'd start to try to do something for the bluebirds or something like that, or the eagles, all the hunters and fishermen would say, hey, I don't want my money going toward them birds. I want more deer to kill, more fish to catch. And they were paying pretty much the entire bill. And that's what's great about 1996 when the conservation sales tax passed, barely, finally, everybody's got a part, everybody plays. So now it allows them to venture out and get more wide conservation of uh, just general outdoors, not just hunting and fishing, killing and catching. You got to kill and catch. I mean, you got, that's part of wildlife management. You know that just like uh, anything else, herd management's all it is. So we need people to kill deer. Last year, they killed 213,000 deer in Arkansas. That's wow. how many were checked legally. Think about that. And wow. every year, every year they come back. I mean, I don't know how they do that. It's just, I love nature. Estimated population of a million deer here in Arkansas, less a few thousand uh, from this morning. I, think I was thinking 40,000 today. But probably so. I wouldn't doubt it. Yeah. The kids killed, uh, we had youth hunt last weekend. They killed 8,000 deer. You only have one first deer. I love to watch those kids come in mm -hmm. Bass Pro, showing me a picture, big old grins on them. I remember that day. I was 16 years old. I killed a spike and it, I couldn't have been any happier if it had been a 12 point. So. <laughs> The yep. I think it's funny. We, we have a Christmas bird count down here that uh, usually when we have our, our after count, we meet at someone's house and they usually make deer chili. <laughs> oh, that <laughs> isn't chili. <laughs> it's good, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> I serve on the board of an organization called Arkansas Hunters Feeding the Hungry. And uh, it's, it's doing very well now. It's catching on where people donate deer. We have a very liberal bag limit here, what, six deer. And, and, and a lot of our Kansans are very good conservationists. They won't go shoot more deer than what they can eat, you know, one or two deer a year. But this allows them to keep hunting. And they go ahead and kill some more and they can donate it to hunters feeding the hungry. It doesn't cost them anything. And, and I think we fed close to a quarter of a million meals last year with that. So. It's a win. It's a win-win situation for everybody except the deer. <laughs> uh, Steve, what we always tried to do was, after someone had killed everything that they wanted in our camp, mm -hmm. we we had them donate the deer, but we also had them pay to get it processed. Okay. And and so that you know, Good. they the hunters weren't they can afford to to pay for that. So so we we made them do that. <laughs> uh, so it may be something that you can try to get more camps to do. We did that at one time and we felt like that was a deterrent. A lot of people said, Hey, I'll donate a deer, but I ain't going to pay for it. So what we do now too, is a lot of people will kill a deer or two. And when they go pick up their deer that they've already paid for, you know, they keep the steaks and everything. We just say, Hey, give us three or four packages of that burger. Cause you usually have a lot of burger and they ground all this into burger anyway. So, and it works pretty well. And the, uh, the hunter feeding hunger, we have fundraisers to raise money to pay the processors. We have to pay the processors about a, about a buck a pound, I think, to process it. So, yeah. and, and it's working pretty well. We have a lot of good donors and supporters. Something we just started uh, too recently, a couple of years ago is snack stick program. Uh, I was amazed at how many kids go home for the weekend, nothing to eat. And a lot of these schools, not just in the country, I'm talking about right here in Little Rock, uh, there are so many kids that go home every weekend and they send a backpack home with them and it's full of uh, food that they won't have anything to eat. And these, they make snack sticks like those little Slim Jims yep. out of deer meat because they don't have a shelf life. And those things just been, it's going great. The kids love them. And we got a lot of sponsors that sponsors a specific school or something like that with it. So it's really exciting to be a part of that. Is that something that the... The process is the, the hunters feeding the hungry, do they do the snack sticks too, or is it just certain one? There, there's, there's only one place that makes the snack sticks. And I think they're in, I think Missouri right now. We're trying to find somebody down here, but uh, Ronnie Ritter heads up Arkansas hunters feeding the hungry. And like once or twice a year, he'll go up there and take a bunch of deer, let them process and bring a bunch of snack sticks back. I don't think anybody in Arkansas can do it yet. They're trying, I think. Any other uh, birders? What you got? Well, Dottie had uh, 
I lost Mike you. And Megan. Say that again. I'll ask my question then while okay. going for Megan. Um, so besides the, the conservation sales tax that led to a big focus on non-game animals, what other changes have you seen in Game and Fish Commission over your 37 year career there? I, th I think the attitude of the commissioners broadening out, no, I, I mean, to me, I wish I could have worked for some of the existing commissioners. Uh, usually they were diehard hunting and fishing, ducks, deer, trout, but I've seen them actually appreciate more uh, and, and even away from wildlife. I mean, mountain biking, uh, hiking, canoe. And I think they know now that we're all in this together. And, and if we don't, if we don't join hands, if you will, and, and, and like I said, we have so many special interest groups here and you can't please them all. You're never going to please them all, but you better include them all because we all pay a part and we play a part. I mean, we really do. So I think the attitude of the commission, uh, it's not perfect. That's made up of people, but let me tell you what, a lot of people, hit me a long time from other states and said, man, how do y'all do it in Arkansas? And the difference is we have a commission that gets to make the rules and regulations based on the biological recommendations. And all your other states, except for about one or two, um, their legislators make their decisions on, it's purely political, has nothing to do with biology. And, and, and man, we're just so blessed. Us in Missouri, I think, are the only two states that have a conservation sales tax. And that just made a role of difference. I think, I think, guys, it's bringing in some, back when I, when it passed in 96, I think the first year it brought in like 80 million new dollars a year. Unbelievable. So, uh, and of course, we still get the hunting and fishing license sales. And if you really look at the forecast of that, it doesn't look good. I mean, all across the nation, the the sports of hunting and fishing are dying and a lot of different reasons. We've done a lot of research on that as well. And it makes sense when you stop and look at, uh, if you hunt and fish, more than likely we were introduced to hunting and fishing by our grandpa or by, by our dad. Well, think about how many families don't have dads in them now. I mean, it's amazing. And look at all the competition. Now we got dads. I mean, I got a, I got a son-in-law, great worker and everything. He never hunted or fished but they play soccer, all these other things now, computers. I got 11 year old grandson. Folks, I got 11 year old grandson that he could care less about hunting and fishing. It breaks my heart, but he's good on computers uh, and you can't make them, you know what I'm saying? So it's a different day and uh, we, better, we better look abroad rather than just on focusing on one little thing. I'm excited about it, I really am, I think it's, 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 it's doing good. One of the things I saw him do in, in Georgia, uh, Patty was living in Georgia, and w so I was spending a lot of time down there. But uh, they, they introduced a different license type, uh, a use, you know, a, a, a land use good. Uh, license. And so you could either have a hunting or a fishing license or a land use license, any of those, to get into, uh, you know, these the government lands. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it caused a, a major stir and some people refused to buy a fishing license, which was $5 cheaper than a land, land <laughs> because they said they weren't going to fish. And it's like, well, give me a fishing license because it's $5 cheaper. And if I can get in with a fishing license, I'm cool. But we also encourage everybody to buy duck stamps every year, Good. even though none of us are duck hunters. Uh, the, the money from the duck stamps actually go to habitat sure. uh, and so we benefit from it. So um, I, I know I would not be opposed to doing, you know, something similar to what they did in Georgia, where we can actually uh, help in, in raising the, the funds for, you know, conservation. So well, I, hope, I hope Arkansas gets there. <laughs> and I got, well, I got you know, some young buddies that are working for the Game of Fish that are working that direction. <laughs> so, yeah, one thing they did a while back, uh, trying to bring, bring back the Bob White quail, and now they have a quail stamp. You can buy a quail stamp, it's not mandatory, uh, but a lot of people are ending up, they know where the, the, the money goes. Something I learned is real good, like you're talking about, you know, when, when gaming fish or anybody plants a food plot, my main reason for planting it's probably to attract deer, <laughs> but there's a lot of other stuff that gets used that food. I think that I've learned a word, I think it's called biodiversity. Does that make sense? I got that from a biologist, but it is. It's when you plant some, 
and you think about the turtles that get to use it, you get, you know, the insects, the, the birds, the deer, the turkey, the hogs get to root it up, but, uh, but it benefits everything. You know, if you pull your money like that, DU, Ducks Unlimited, the trout stamps, the same thing with the trout. And it's a special interest groups coming out again. Uh, Texas, they, uh, they had an interesting study there. You know, uh, Mexicans, when they come, when they fish, they fish a lot, but they don't fish for the same reason we do. You know, when we go fishing, we go for the fellowship and stuff. You catch something, it's great. They go for the food. Anytime you see a Mexican or something like that fishing, they got their family with them, the whole family. So now Texas actually sells a family fishing license where they can all fish if they're together. Well, know. that's the way it was when I was growing up. Oh, was it? Yeah, we, we fish to eat. And that's why I really got interested in birds because I got bored with the fishing and I started watching the birds. <laughs> yeah. Y'all have the, I think Louisiana has the cheapest fishing license in the United States. The cheapest? Uh, our, ours is ten fifty a year. I think yours is cheaper than that. I think so because they try this Louisiana wild stamp like yeah. he was talking about and um, people would get the fishing license instead because it was cheaper. Yeah. That, that's the cane pole fishing. There's different categories of fishing. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, my, I've got a good friend that she uh, she gets real irritated with me because I turn all my fish back. She says, I don't get this catch and release. That doesn't make <laughs> sense to me. <laughs> so, well, she's not well, on this meeting tonight, so I, or I'd call her by name. <laughs> hey, here's what you do. Next time you catch a limit, you ask her if she wants them. She'll say, yeah, if you'll clean them. It, she would. It, it, it's yeah, hard to and, get away. And, <laughs> and cook them. <laughs> I tell them, I'll catch them if you'll clean them and cook them and I'll eat them. I'll do that with you. But uh, dad and I used to give away our brim to, to needy people. And it got to a point where if they wouldn't clean, they didn't want them. I said, man, they're not very hungry. So we just throw them back. Yep. And I throw everything back. They, they, I've ran over in the years, lots of people that actually do, you know, hunt and fish for food and the work, oh, yeah. you know, the, I guess at uh, Christmas time one year, I pulled one of those angels off a tree. Uh -huh. The kid said he wanted uh, a camo jacket and camo jackets are kind of stylish and they issue ones that aren't very warm. They're just nice looking jackets. And I yeah. went and bought one of those. And then I talked to the lady and said, you know, I wasn't sure if he needed a, an adult or a, a child's medium, you know? Yeah. And she said, oh, he's a big boy. And uh, she, uh, he said, uh, he'd take a, an adult size and it says a good warm jacket because he uses it for hunting. Oh. Said, said his family doesn't have any money and he's out there hunting for food wow. to put on their table. I took that fancy camo jacket back, back. And I brought <laughs> full coveralls, insulated oh. pair of boots, a, a jacket, some clothes to go in under, some long handles. And I sent him a, a lot of clothes back. I said, this boy will be warm when he's hunting for that's, his family. So that's awesome. There, there, there's, there's a lot more people that are like that in Arkansas. I mean, we're, we're probably too shielded from a yeah. lot of that. And it, it just, I mean, it shocked me when I found that kid, you know, and, but there are a lot of people like that in the state. That, especially that with the price are. of meat, the price of meat nowadays, especially, I mean, uh, we saw a little dip in the donations to Hunters Feeding the Hungry last year because the price of meat's going so high. And uh, of course, you keep you know, you, you, that's good meat. But yeah. there's there's, a, there's some ministries that kind of do what you do as well. You talked about where they reach out to these needy kids that maybe don't have a dad. And they, I know one guy, Dwayne Hayda. I don't know if y'all know him. He's up in Mountain Home. He's an artist and a sculptor. He's a fly fishing guide, uh, very talented. But he's got a group called CTO, uh, Conservation something. But uh, he, he brings them in to, for a camp, and they actually earn their way to get stuff like this. And I just got uh, two boxes full of clothes, used hunting clothes to give those boys. So uh, that's, that's awesome. There's some good ministries like that. Well, Dan, how come just me, you, and Megan put our pictures up and the rest of these people, are they really there? Or, you know, is Jack and Pam, are they really out there? Or are they? 
Some people are shy. We're not shy. No, none of us are shy. No. <laughs> we wouldn't be in this business. Now, this is fun, though. I, I could do this a lot, man. I don't even have to get dressed or go anywhere. And Although I do like to be places and see you face to face and watch you laugh or I can't see who's sleeping or anything like that. <laughs> I'll say I took my picture down because I went to work. I have an errand service and I'm about to let some dogs in and feed them. So, oh, well, thank, <laughs> so thanks. So I'm listening and working. Okay, well, thanks for joining us. That's awesome. Yeah, that's cool. I see Jack. <laughs> where, where, we were trying to catch a spider that I found right next to my chair. He disappeared. Giant spider. So there's a bit of excitement here. We will let it go outside in the cold. Is it a, is it a fishing spider? <laughs> He's going to do a catch and release. Uh, probably a wolf spider. Yeah, the trouble with a wolf spider is if you get them with all of the babies on their back, yeah. oh, you yeah. try to catch them, they all fall off in 60 different directions and you're catching spiders for the next year. Now, do, bird, do birds eat them? Birds eat them, won't they? Some of them do. Yes. Yeah. That'd be good. We have Carolina Wren here who every morning they come out of a little basket thing that we put up for them. And then they go around the house, all around the outside, picking That's up the good. spiders along the windows. My wife would be, my wife would be glad for that. Tough being a spider. <laughs> are there, are there any birds that eat wasp? Yes. Yes. Summer tanagers. Yes. Summer tanagers. <laughs> I need to get some down here at my cabin. <laughs> yeah. This is their time of year. <laughs> the waltz, not the tanagers. Well, if it turns warm, you know, the, of course, it's cool for them. But boy, you let the sun come out and they're swarming down here. I killed 50 in my living room the other day. In your living room? Yeah, oh, they come Lord. down the chimney. Wow. They get up in the trees and they come down in the, the chimney. Wow. I've also put my jacket on this week with one in it. That was not fun. <laughs> Did not take me long to get out of my clothes. <laughs> I can imagine that. Yeah, I do have Go ahead. Yeah. I have one more question. Yeah. Uh, I was going to ask you if you had a favorite part of Arkansas. You know, it's wherever I am, but I'm, I'm, I really, I really tend to like North Arkansas now in the Ozark streams. I, I grew up down here brim fishing in flat waters and oxbow lakes and things, and they're pretty, they're nice. But boy, I love those uh, Crooked Creek up around Yaleville up in there. I just love the smaller the body of water, the better I like it. Uh, you know, we got some beautiful lakes here, Washita and DeGray and man, Beaver. I mean, some huge ones and they're great fishing. I mean, believe me, but the smaller that water gets, the more I like it. I can fish around a farm pond all day long as long as they're biting a little bit, but I love creeks. I think I really fall in love with creeks. So my, my favorite parts up in the Ozarks uh, above, Clarksville up in there, the Piney Creek. Uh, I just love Ozark Mountain Streams. I think that'd be my favorite. Well, that's awesome. I'm up in Stone County myself. So oh, look at you. Part. Yeah, yeah. Where, where do you live? What town? Um, it's Pleasant Grove. It's close to Mountain View. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Stone. Y'all got some great turkey hunting up here. I like turkey hunting too. Yep. But just beautiful. I mean. We're, I mean, there's not many places of Arkansas. I went to school in Oklahoma. And if you've ever been to Oklahoma, I, I always tell people, I said, they used to, when I was going to school out there on the back of their license plate, they had Oklahoma is okay. That's what it said. And a guy said, well, do you know why they put that on there? And I said, well, yeah, okay is the first two letters of Oklahoma, which makes sense on the back of the license plate. He said, no. He said, that's not why they put that on there. So why? 
He said they couldn't spell mediocre. <laughs> 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 so I thought that was pretty good. But there are some places in Oklahoma that's just plum ugly. I'm sorry. But Arkansas, of course, you got the Delta, but that's pretty in its own way. I mean, it can it gets hot and it's not beautiful, but it, it can be pretty in its own way, especially when those ducks flying over there. Yeah, I think all of Arkansas is pretty special. It really is. We're, it's not hard. You know, everybody says, man, you had a great job. I said, yeah. I said, it's not hard to sell. Just tell people where to go and let them go, and it sells itself. So many places to go. And good people, too. Anything else? Comments, questions? You ready to go call the hogs or go to bed? It's 11 o'clock, it seems like. It, it's 10 3 and halftime, I think. Okay. That's awesome, man. I think that's what it is. I got to look the, with the binoculars. <laughs> That's just like being it's, at the game. It's 10, it's 10 3, but it's LSU 10. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it is? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Now that makes a difference. Yeah. I thought we were ahead. I knew I hadn't uh, heard my wife scream in there. Well, that, the TV is way up in the other room. It's, it's like this part of the cabin is, is, is big. And yeah, I can't see the TV well enough to tell what the score is from here. <laughs> but I did bring a pair of binoculars over here where I can watch it. <laughs> Good. We'll get the second half in. No problem. I think we're supposed to have a little business meeting, aren't we? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, if nobody else has any questions, we'll take a little break and kind of stretch our legs for about five minutes and then um, come back and do a quick business meeting. But uh, Steve, we had a wonderful time. It was very, very nice talking with you. And uh, thank my you. My pleasure. Me. Thanks. Well, thank y'all. Thank y'all for zooming in with me. Now I've been zoomed. <laughs> thank you for coming and zooming with us. <laughs> all right, love all you guys. We'll get you on the radio show pretty soon. Talk to some more birds. Right cool. Yeah, sounds good. All right, thank y'all. I see. Thank Bye. you. <laughs> yeah.